I swear, doing taxes is getting harder and harder every year. Now, where do I put seven Doctor Who Monopoly sets? Hmm. Oh, anyway, you could say that I have a monopoly on Doctor Who Monopoly. <laughs> anyway, what are you claiming this year, Aaron? Uh, I was thinking an award for world's most handsome man. And hosiery. Lots of hosiery. <laughs> what is it with you and hosiery? You know what? I don't want to know. Hey, hey, man, what are you claiming? Oh, uh, you know, just the usual. Uh, men's underpants, teeth whitener, mirror. What? Aaron, I think our receipts have been mixed up. No, no, this seems right. <laughs> Good evening. Tonight on the show, in aid of NADOC Week, we are joined by singer, songwriter and Indigenous advocate Scott Darlow. Stand-up comedy from the delightful Petra Elliott and music from Amistad. Hey, Dill, mm. why, why aren't you filing your taxes? Don't need to. The producers have a special deal with me where I get paid under the table. You, you get, get paid? <laughs> Typical. I'm your host, Rob Lloyd. Now, recently here at Live on Bowen, behind the scenes, I've gotten into a little bit of trouble from our producers because apparently I have said some things that I shouldn't have. So, uh, the producers, uh, to keep me on script, have employed, and they've gone to the rather desperate measures, I think, of employing a behavioural motivator. Because <laughs> nothing says discipline like a sensible jumper. <laughs> All right, so let's get uh, started with what's been going on this week. Well, it's been a huge week in sport. The Ashes will be starting soon. And straight... <laughs> anyway. Uh, also in sport, Wimbledon. Oh, my God, there's been a major upset with... Surrey. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm being censored now? Look, it is 2013. So how is it that I have the right to free speech until I express it? You know what I feel like? I feel like Graham Kennedy, when back in the heyday, he got into so much trouble because of his crow call that sounded a kind of bit like the F word. Yeah. He did it as a, a stunt so that he could get fired from Channel 9. And you know what? I can do one better than Graham Kennedy. I'm being so offensive that I'm not even hired by Channel 9 in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. anyway, I think we're being just a little bit too sensitive. You know, like when Lara Bingle cheerfully said, where the bloody hell are you? That ad was taken off TV. The same TV that has no trouble in showing nude photos of Lara Bingle that were taken <laughs> against her consent. <laughs> and speaking of sexy, sexy, nudie stuff, okay, sex scenes have kind of, you know, the restriction on sex scenes have lightened up in Australia, but full frontal nudity, they've got really strict on. Okay, so Underbelly has having a great time showing drug-fueled, prostitute orgies, oh, but showing a bit of uh, rumple foreskin, that's a no-no. <laughs> you, know, you know who I blame? I blame the ACB. No, not the Australian Cricket Board, the Australian Classification Board. They're a federal body. And you know what? I find their body offensive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am affronted by their full frontal prudity. <laughs> what? What was that? I have a tick. Anyway, you know what? <laughs> I'm not going to stand for this crap. I should be allowed to say whatever I want. Now, with this verbal freedom, I'm not going to talk about, God forbid, important stuff like sexism, racism, religion, or even the tax on tampons. Oh, no, there are people who can do it much better than I can. All I want to do is have the freedom to talk about obscure TV shows and movies like Earth 2 or The Magic Roundabout <laughs> or Monster Squad, okay? And I don't want to cuss like Fitty Sand or I don't want to be vulgar like Gilbert Godfrey. I've just got a puerile sense of humour, and I want to be able to say poo as many times as I want. Poo, 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 poo. It's funny. It's dead set funny. So, I'm not edgy. You can tell I'm not edgy. And of all the people to be chosen to host a PG talk show, I'm kind of the perfect fit. I'm just really annoyed that the censors have got their priorities a little skew-if. Yeah, skew... 
Skew if's not a dirty word. Sounds dirty. Well, you know what? I've got one thing to ask you. What? Can I have another? I kind of like it. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, oh, right in the deal spot. <laughs> so that's what's been going on in my censored world. Do you want to hear what's going on in the rest of the pixelated world? <laughs> All righty. Here we go. Oh, OK. Doctors are now using folk music, independent folk music, to soothe crying children at hospitals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. While they claim restless nights are down, beards and anchor tattoos are on the rise. <laughs> A new app has been launched, and it's called Hell is Other People, which allows users to avoid their friends. OK? <laughs> now, if you're invited home for Christmas, you get a warning saying, danger, danger, boring, mildly racist conversation ahead. <laughs> right there. And finally, Jermaine Jackson is set to open a series of hotels, and he said it was my, what Michael would have wanted. It's true. Michael Jackson's last words to his brother Jermaine were, I want you to open up a chain of hotels. <laughs> and that's all our topical news. Stop that. We want you to follow us online, and here's how you do it. Got something to say? Well, we're all ears. So feel free to touch base by visiting our Facebook and Twitter pages or visit our website for more behind-the-scenes info at liveonbowen.com. This week, we've got another great instalment of Caption This. Thanks to all the excellent submissions from you on Facebook and Twitter. Now, last week on the show, we put up a, uh, a picture that we need captioned. This is the picture from last week. Oh, yeah. Oh, so many ideas are running through my head. Now, let's go through the runners-up first. Now, our third runner-up was Christopher, and his caption was, I can't keep the chicks off me. Yeah. <laughs> Next up is Aaron Powell, and he had this one. Some people will pluck anything. <laughs> yeah, a groan's as good as a laugh. Senya, have us our next one. And this one was, hands off, he's mine. <laughs> and the winner is Crystal with this entry. And it is, he's heard the word about the bird. I went to everybody's head. Keep going, it wasn't weird at all. <laughs> <sighs> now, next week on the show, we want you to caption this picture right here. Have a look. <laughs> Get to work, ladies and gentlemen, on Facebook and Twitter. Caption that. Now, it is now time for Aaron McCarthy to teach us the ways of the hunter. The job hunter, Aaron McCarthy! <laughs> When you're job hunting, a lot of people say it's best to go for a job you love or one you can do well. These same people will probably also try and tell you that the earth is round and that Ricky Martin is gay. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> it's called job hunting for a reason. It's a sport. Only the best will prevail. And if you want to be the king of the corporate jungle, you have to show that you're at the top of the food chain. You have to think like a hunter. The modern day job market is like a watering hole and your job advertisement is like animal tracks by the water. You have to know what you're looking for so you can bring down a tasty zebra instead of that chewy, bland water buffalo. Forget multitasking. Multitasking is so last season. Do you clean your teeth whilst hunting wild boar? Do you iron your shorts whilst setting landmines? No, because that would be dangerous. <laughs> IT jobs are fantastic. These places are full of nerds who all think they're big shots. But it's up to you to remind them of where they sit on the food chain. Have fun stalking your prey. Give them an atomic wedgie, a Chinese burn, and a nipple cripple. And they'll have you hired as chief party officer before you can say, I hope that salary includes superannuation and your lunch money. <laughs> the honourable thing to do is to give your game a sporting chance, but a successful hunter knows to pick off the sick, the weak and the lame. It's the same for job hunting. Employers are most vulnerable when they're tired and off guard or drunk. 
tripping a prospective boss's fire alarm is a good way to get him out of his comfort zone and <laughs> onto the street. It's what I like to call neutral hunting territory. <laughs> Think of it as a corporate tranquilizer, if you will. In his dazed and confused state, it will be easier to convince him that you are the man for the job. Remember, men are visual creatures. We read for the pictures, not for the words. Don't tell him you're right for the job. Show him with your range of headshots, such as the uh, responsible employee, <laughs> the fun-loving workmate, the thoughtful, problem-solving hard worker <laughs> with dashing good looks. <laughs> They'll be blown away. Another important part of successful job hunting is camouflage. Camouflage allows you to sabotage your competitors who have their eye on your trophy job. So they get to their office and swap their coffee for decaf, add some porn sites to their Google search history, <laughs> clog up their stapler with multiple staples, pre-hole punch all of their paper into that annoyingly inappropriate A3 size. <laughs> An enemy who is tired and confused will put up less of a fight when you pounce like a lion. Once you have an interview, you can move in for the kill. Think of your handshakers locking your jaws down on a gazelle's throat, letting your potential employer know that you are now in control and it will all be over soon. <laughs> Mercy is for the unemployed. The Centrelink line is full of people who relaxed their grip before they had something solid in writing. When your employer finally relents and gives you a contract, sign it in blood. <laughs> so they know you mean business. I've been Aaron McCarthy. Happy hunting. That was Bro Church with Aaron McCarthy. Still to come, I select a new town for my trip around Australia. Heyman Ken talks about Twitter. This is Live on Bowen!